Greetings, Earthlings. This is the Animal Clinic at Oxford Mills. I'm Dr. Richard Wojciechowski, and this is Tito with his pirate bandana. And this is a show all about animals. Today we'll have a number of uh, topics. Joni Toole from Oakland County Animal Control will be here to talk about her the adoption agency that they have down there. Then we'll also have a couple of the pets from there up for adoption. Uh, we'll talk about the care of when you get a new dog or cat. Mr. Jim Hughes will be here with his dog Mitchell. Mitchell is a service dog that works at Beaumont Hospital in Royal Oak. And then after that, Tito will help me with a question and answer period. So grab your dog or cat, give it a hug. If you don't have a pet, grab a neighbor's pet and get ready for the show. This is you, and this is your community. You have a great idea, but how do you get that idea to your community? Huh? ONTV has your answer. You see, ONTV is a part of your community. We help you get your idea on cable so everyone you know will learn about your great idea. So, what are you waiting for? Get your idea on cable and into your community. Get your idea on TV. Hello again, I'm Dr. Richard Wojciechowski, and I'm here with Joni Toole from Oakland County Animal Control, and she's going to give us kind of an overview of what they do and also of her adoption agency there. So, what is Oakland County Animal Control exactly, and what uh, all the different responsibilities did you have? Well, the Animal Control Division uh, handles the cruelty complaints. They pick up the stray animals in the street, um, and then there's the animal shelter where the stray animals are housed. And we also take in owner give-ups or owner relinquished animals uh, to help them try to find homes. You know, I know a lot of people don't realize that that you also um, do a lot of animal cruelty care. Yes, yes we do a lot of animal cruelty care. We do dogs, cats, horses, cows, pigs, um, any kind of animal we do. Um, even pet stores, if they see a pet store that's not taking care of the animals properly, we'll go in and investigate. Um, but dogs mostly, and a lot of people don't know this, is that they need to have food, water, and shelter at all times when they're outside. And we get, that's a majority of our calls, is people calling in saying, you know, look, my neighbor's got a dog, he's tied it to a tree, and there's no dog house, and they don't water it, and, and, and such. So you gotta, you gotta be aware of that when you do own a dog, and you're gonna put him outside, he needs a dog house, he needs water, and he needs food. Yeah, having a pet does take a lot of responsibility. It does. Um, and I think what people don't also realize is how much of an ad adoption center you have there. Yes. Uh, we at the clinic here, we do get quite a lot of puppies and kitties and even older animals that have been adopted through there. Could you tell us a little bit about that? Sure. Uh, at the shelter, we have probably about 100 dogs and probably about 125 cats. Uh, we always have more cats than dogs. Cats seem to be a big population explosion. We're always trying to get the word out, spay and neuter your pets, especially your cats. They need that most of all. Um, but we do have a lot of dogs, a lot of different dogs that people wouldn't even necessarily think are at the shelter, like purebred dogs, little dogs, big dogs. We have all kinds. Um, so if you're looking you know, to adopt a pet, um, it's a great place to come and, and check us out. And also, um, what I like to tell people is to breed research. See what breed is going to fit into your lifestyle. That causes um, such a headache when people come in, they want a certain breed they think they want, um, but they're not familiar with that breed. And then they have to end up bringing it back and you know the kids are heartbroken and everything. So your breed research is very important. That's, we can always tell when the latest Walt Disney movie is on. Exactly. Because we get a lot of, well, I want this breed or this yep. breed, and we try to talk to them too about, yes. well, let's see if that breed can fit in with your your whole lifestyle. Yes. Yes. Yeah. People don't a, a lot of times think about that. They just think about going and getting the dog. But you've got to do that research. Some dogs don't like kids. Some dogs don't do well in apartments. Some dogs, you know, they need special needs. So. Sure. Well, can you tell us about who you have here? Um, well, this is Maggie, and she's 13 weeks old, and uh, she's available for adoption at the shelter. Right now we have a lot of kittens, 
and uh, I think it's due to the warm weather and it will probably continue right on into fall, I think. Um, it doesn't seem to be letting up, but if, you know, people are looking for kittens and I see a lot of times on the side of the road, free kittens. Well, those oh. free kittens aren't very free. free. Um, Maggie here would be vaccinated. Um, she'll be spayed or neutered and it's $57.50 for her and uh, she's vetted. And then of course she would have to come see someone like you to continue on her vaccinations and whatnot. But at least she's got her basics down and it's only 50 bucks oh, for a cat that's, nice. that's all yes. vetted, yeah. Very good. And I think you have somebody else here too. Yes, we have Bo. Maybe we... <laughs> you silly boy. Oh. Okay, <laughs> Bo, can you sit up? <laughs> sit up, Bo, come here. There you okay. go. And what about Bo? Now, Bo is three years old. He is a Labrador retriever. Um, a lot of people like the lab breed. Um, they're pretty laid back. They're just a general all-around good dog, which we see a lot of lab mixes and a lot of uh, purebred labs like Bo here at the shelter. Very good. Well, really appreciate you coming down and talking to us, and I hope these two guys get um adopted soon. Yes, <laughs> Bo's a very good dog. He's He rides in the car well. Um, he pulls a little bit, but it's because he's young. He needs some training. But um, all in all, he's pretty good manner-wise. He doesn't seem to jump on people or anything like that. But Well, you know, I do see a lot of um, pets here, and a lot of them are really, really nice, but they're mm -hmm. just out of control. Yes. And I have to say, he's he's very good. Yes. He is for the, the lab breed. Labs, yeah. labs can be, can be um, quite rambunctious, yes. Very good. <laughs> well, maybe somebody at the beginning of the show, I mentioned about it, if you don't have a dog or a cat, go and grab your neighbors and give it a hug. Well, maybe instead go down to the Oakland County Adoption Center and see what can happen. Thank you so much. Thank you. Did you know that you can watch ON TV on the web? How cool is that? Just surf on over to www.orionontv.org to watch your favorite ON TV show. A service of Orion Neighborhood Television. Hi, I'm back again with Bo, and Bo is up for adoption at the Oakland County Animal Control Center. Um, I thought this uh, uh, segment I would be talking about uh, when you get a new puppy or a kitty or even an adult dog, um, what to keep in mind. Um, one of the things is you have a new dog um, or a cat that's part of your family, but especially with a dog, they consider you the pack. And as a pack member, he'll feel, he or she will feel much better if they know where they fit in. Uh, and that means not, don't do anything uh, negative. Don't hit them. Um, no pain involved. You want to be firm and you want to have positive reinforcement. You want to make sure that they know that you are the leader of the pack, not out of fear, but out of love and respect. Uh, you want to give the new dog uh, or cat as many different experiences as possible. Now we're talking about different noises, different people, uh, let them get used to certain situations. Uh, what you don't want to do is have your new dog out somewhere, whether it's a puppy or an adult dog, and have people come up to them very quickly and scare them. Um, they can be the nicest people in the world, but if they come up too quickly and too loudly, that can really throw them off. Children have a habit, too, when they see a new dog or a puppy or a kitty, of running up to that pet and sticking their face right in their face. Uh, and that can be quite intimidating. So um, as you're the new owner of the dog or the cat, uh, you have, should have full control. Um, if you don't feel comfortable with a new person, no matter how nice they are, if you don't feel comfortable with that person coming up to your pet, you are not a bad person by saying, please stay away right now. Um, he's going through a special training. Uh, let me have control of it. Okay? It's real important because if they come and get your pet all riled up, they leave and you're stuck having to deal with it. 
Noise is going to be a real problem too with a lot of pets and you want to get them acclimated as soon as possible. And one of the best things you can do is if you head out to um, a local library, you can sometimes take out a CD that has sound effects on it, uh, like planes flying, maybe a motorcycle, or different noises. And what you can do then is play the CD at a real low level around your pet, and in time, maybe over the next few days, make the uh, CD a little bit louder. Uh, let them kind of get used to different sounds, and that could really help in the long run. They're also, when, especially when you get a puppy, um, they're at an age when a lot of learning behavior is based on playing. Now, if you notice, Bo's playing with me, but he's not biting me at any point. A lot of people, especially males, when they get a new dog in the house, they love to play bite with their puppy. Play biting is actually teaching your dog that biting is acceptable behavior. And that's one thing you don't want to do. Um, tug of war is also a very dominant behavior. Uh, most people will play tug of war with their animals. Invariably, they'll allow the puppy to win. This is so cute, the puppy won the tug of war. Well, that's teaching that puppy that he, is, he or she is dominant over you. So <laughs> there's a lot of things that you could you know, learn about when you get a new puppy or kitty, please talk to your veterinarian and he or she can not only look at their health, but also can give you ideas of diet and behavior and things to make them as comfortable as possible for them and for you. Orion Neighborhood Television has been your community connection for the last 20 years. From local concerts and sports to resident made original programming, we are the voice of Lake Orion. Featuring a large professional studio, ONTV can provide you with the tools you need to make a quality program. Our staff is knowledgeable, friendly, and eager to help with your program success. Your voice, your community, on TV. Hi, we're back again. Uh, we're here with Jim Hughes with his dog Mitchell. You know, a lot of people hear about surface dogs and you know about the seeing eye dogs. There are dogs that help uh, deaf people. There was one on the news this morning where they're, they're teaching to help people with epilepsy. Uh, Mitchell is a very special dog. He's a service dog for Beaumont Hospital and he has his own hospital name tag and Mr. Mitchell Oh, excuse me, Mr. Hughes. <laughs> this is Mr. Mitchell. Mr. Hughes is going to tell us all about the program, well, how he's trained uh, Mitchell, and some stories, too. So, yeah. Jim, uh, um, tell me about the whole program, and how do you get situated, and um, how did you get situated? <laughs> well, it's actually a, a kind of a funny thing. I've worked at Beaumont for like 30 years. I've trained dogs for 25. Didn't know they even had a program down there. Happened me watch a TV program about 10 years ago out of Chicago talking about therapy dogs. And I said, well, I, I can do that without a problem. So I contacted people down at Bowman. They said they had a program, but it was kind of small. And uh, they ran it up on the 8th and 9th floor. So I, uh, but you have to have 11 tests you have to pass. You have to be certified. Oh. Uh, most people don't realize they can take a dog to a nursing home with no certification if you get an OK. But at a hospital, you can't. It's kind of like liabilities. When he's working uh, at Beaumont, he's got $100,000 insurance on him, liability insurance. He's also, it's called a TDI dog, that's Therapy Dog International. That's where the training came from. I, I did the training, but they had the program to give me the, the rules you have to go by. And some of the things that you might not think about to be a, a service dog or a, a, a therapy dog is dogs have to work around wheelchairs. Most dogs have never seen a wheelchair, so you bring a strange dog in and have a wheelchair coming right at them, it really freak them out or people on crutches. It's a total unnatural motion, which can make a dog very nervous. So you, you, you condition them to these things. You work the dog around wheelchairs, around wheelchair walkers. Uh, another t one of the tests is loud noises. You're in a hospital, you've got the dog with a patient, and all of a sudden someone drops a tray of dishes. Well, the dog can acknowledge that noise, but he shouldn't go bananas on you, and, and he don't. So you condition them to all these things, making noises, doing different things. 
Uh, another thing is you have to be able to do with the dog at the hospital is you have to be able to leave the dog and be out of sight or he can't see you. And this is all part of the training to show that you have total control of the animal. And you can train any dog to be a therapy dog. Uh, some dogs do a better job than others do, and I don't mean in the working part, but if you have a therapy dog and you're in the hospital and someone walks in your room, or the, first of all, back up a minute, uh, their job is to bring blood pressure down to bring anxieties down, to put a smile on your face. I walk into a room with a 100-pound Rottweiler, it ain't going to bring your blood pressure down. He might work just as good as this dog, but he's going to do just the opposite effect on you. So certain breeds like Springers, Golden Retrievers, Labrador Retrievers, Poodles, these dogs make excellent therapy dogs. Again, I don't want to discredit any other dogs which can do it, but that's just not really their job to do that. Yeah. Uh, Mitchell has a couple of unique stories I think I'd like to tell you. Uh, one time, he had been working there about two years, just visiting patients and things, cheering people up. And I was all done for the day, heading out the door of the hospital, and one of the nurses from the seventh floor says, Jim, have you got a little time to come see a patient we'd like you to see? And, yeah, i got all the time in the world. Well, it happened to be a 19-year-old girl that had graduated from Southfield High School and got hit by a drunk driver. She was a paraplegic, and they weren't getting any response from her. She was okay, she was like in a coma, and I'll give you a demonstration. She was sitting about like this, and you could go like that, and there was nothing there. Had her on a machine, and you should, probably most of you people on TV have seen the little machine go beep, 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 beep. Well, that was doing that, but not very much. So we brought the dog up there. One of the nurses took the girl's hand, put it on his head just like that, that simple, brought it down like this about four times, let it go. Within about 20 seconds, the machine was going beep, 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 beep. And what that was showing the doctors is there was action in that brain. Her facial expressions never changed. They were amazed themselves to see it. So I went back two or three times after that with that patient and did the same thing. Uh, didn't get as good a response the second time as they did the first time, but eventually they moved her out to Colorado to that sports uh, facility and found out that she did come out. She's not a paraplegic totally. So that, that was kind of a neat, uh, a neat story. Is that the same uh, patient that they actually Put her, hand. put her hand on the dog and pulled it back like that. Then when they let it go, the machine went out. Then they did it again. Then herself, she brought her own hand back. Now, you got to remember, this is a paraplegic that has no motion. Well, how they did that, why, how she did it, they can't oh, explain. Even the amazing. doctors were amazed. Right. So we don't know what animals can do for us or what relation comes through that body. And it, and it wasn't just because it was Mitchell. It could have been any, any therapy dog. Sure. Uh, I was just lucky that it happened to be me yeah. to, to see that experience. Well, I do know that it's been proven that as soon as you pet uh, a dog or a cat, blood pressure on a person lowers. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, that's why I think my blood pressure is so good here. Oh, yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, working yeah. with that. So. And, 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 that, and that's true. And, and then it's some other uh, a good story I had. Uh, people, when you go to see them at the hospital, uh, some people are scared of dogs. They have anticipation of the dog going to bother them and that. And before we go in their room, we always ask them to bring the dog in. Well, this one day... The nurse told me, go in room 10, whatever it was, there's a young guy in there, maybe you want to see a dog. So I went in there, and left the dog in the hall, because he'll sit right by himself, and uh, stay. Just like that, he, he won't move. And uh, went in the children together, the dog in the hallway, and he says, I don't want to see no dog. I said, well, you're sure he might make you feel good. No, I don't want to see no dog. He was a tough guy, probably about 24 years old, muscular guy. I said, okay, that's what you want. I went to leave, he says, uh, well, maybe bring him in for a minute. It took me 20 minutes to get out of that guy's room. <laughs> he wanted, after he got in and pet the dog, wanted to see him, then he didn't seem like such a tough guy. Made, I, and after all that, he said, the dog made me feel good. I said, that's what he was here for. So that's got a couple of different neat stories. And I do know that, you know, besides the therapy dog, I mean, he's such a well-trained patient. He comes here, and I know that you have all the tests run on him, the check for parasites and everything else because of him being a therapy dog. Right, that's one of the qualifications that you have to do. One of the commitments you have to make to keep the dog healthy like that and, and have him checked like that. And it's, it's all done on paper. And you, I have bring it to you and you've already signed it and yeah. I've taken it to the hospital. Mitchell said. And another thing, to have control of the dog, he loves treats, say. And he knows that's right there and he wants it, but he won't take it until he's given a command to take it. What's the matter? Don't you want to get that? Don't you want it? Now people say, oh, you're teasing them. No, I'm not teasing them at all. It's showing control what you have to have. Okay. 
And that's something we've talked about on care of animals, um, that he's part of your pack. Basically, yeah. he respects yeah. you, right. not out of fear, No, because you love him more than, <laughs> than anything almost. almost. <laughs> I won't tell your wife that. Yeah. But, yeah. you know, um, and he, he, he really respects and loves yeah. you. And totally, there is no fear or no um, uh, problems with that. No. You can walk up, like say a lot of people, when they get young, but the doctor can attest to this, they'll, they'll get a dog and they'll be feeding it at home and they'll say, well, I can't go near the food, the dog will bite me. That's all in conditioning. When you get that as a puppy, you should get, feed that dog and again, not tease them, you should better walk over and pick that bowl up. Let him know you're there, good dog, pet him on the head, take that food away and hand it back to him. But I know people that have got dogs that you couldn't go near their food because they were never conditioned to it. The dog thinks, you can't reason with the dog, say, hey, I want to give it back to you. They don't understand that. Yeah, and I've so. seen them too. That uh, the people are, they love the their pet, but they're scared. They're yep. afraid of it. Yep. And they will tell me that I just can't do anything. And but I don't want to. You know, yeah. you need to get some help for that. Right. And like we talked about earlier, when you're afraid of a dog or an animal, any kind, you can't hide it. You can walk them and say, "I'm scared of that doberman," but I'm going to show I'm not. If you're scared of them. It comes right out of your out of your scent glands, and they pick up they pick up on it so fast it's unbelievable. Their their nose is probably a thousand times more sensitive than what ours are. Well, what are you watching them? And there's on the an camera? undercurrent even with uh, when dogs meet other dogs, and uh -huh. everybody thinks is like Lassie. They all yeah. get along, yeah, no. not necessarily, and they're they're kind we're communicating to each other in yeah. ways that we can't even yeah. comprehend. Correct. You know, animals are like that. I mean, animals have well before the Earthquake hit last week. Yeah. The animals in the National Zoo were showing signs. The gorillas were really showing it. The gorillas, yeah, yeah. Uh, the mother gorilla grabbed the baby, mm -hmm. went up the tree before the earthquake hit. Yeah. The lemurs were starting to vocalize. And so, same thing with dogs. They have, and cats, they have senses that we can't even comprehend. Mm -hmm. Right. And we just have to work with that. Uh, and if anyone did that's watching the program, uh, want to get into the therapy program, whether it's at Beaumont Hospital or Crittenton or one of the other ones, uh, the best thing to do is to contact, you can get it through the, on your computer, ITP, International Therapy Dog International, and uh, you can get information from them about the training and that, and then the dog has to be certified, uh, and that's something you might want to do. Uh, but if you want to take your dogs to nursing homes, just contact a nursing home, as long as the dog's under control and has his shots and everything, most nursing homes will let you bring them in, and it, it is really rewarding. It makes those people feel good, too. And can we see um, Mitchell's... Um Hospital tag? Sure. Yeah. That's his Beaumont official, same as the nurses and the doctors wear. It says Beaumont on it, Mitchell, security therapy. Yeah, he's a big shot. Yeah, he's a big shot. Well, thank you so much for bringing Mitchell. Thank you. And it's time for get, to get my blood pressure down. <laughs>
with the spray, uh, what we have here is non-toxic. You let it air dry in about five or 10 minutes and it actually gets rid of the smell entirely. Um, I've actually had clients who had golden retrievers sprayed by a skunk. There you go, Tito. And after they used the spray and it dried, the clients actually stuck their face right into the fur, back and forth, no smell. So again, that's something, and it's a, not a bad idea to have this product, whatever your veterinarian carries, ahead of time. Because usually the dogs get hit by a skunk 11 o'clock at night, 11.30, nothing's open. You have the whole night to smell that. So that's something to keep in mind. Here's another question I don't think Tito can ask, but my wife is pregnant and she was told by a friend that she shouldn't go near our, our cat's litter pan. Why is that? Well, cats, they can sometimes carry a parasite called toxoplasmosis. Now, if a woman is pregnant and she is exposed to this parasite during the pregnancy, that can cause birth defects, uh, blindness, and other problems. Now, you can also get toxoplasmosis by eating meat that's not thoroughly cooked. Now, if a person is exposed to the toxoplasmosis before they're pregnant and not during, that should not affect the, litter, uh, the baby. Uh, but to be on the safe side, once a woman is pregnant, she should make sure that somebody else always takes care of the litter. This is a question that I probably get once or twice a week. Uh, my dog's just not eating. And, and I'll ask, how active are the, is your dog? All oh, the dogs are bouncing off the walls. It's running around. It's having the greatest time in the world. Um, but it's not eating what he, they think it should. It's more important that your dog's activity than it is how much is eating. As long as it's you know, healthy otherwise, and a lot of times I'll get this question on young animals. Um, but even older animals, if they're active, you know, if there's any concern, there's always lab tests you can run. But invariably, what we normally find is it's a dog that just eats when he wants to, um, but he's more active. You know, we do have the opposite where they eat too much and they grow width-wise. Um, which is not good. Um, as long as your pet's healthy and running around and you're not seeing any other problems, don't be concerned about how much or how little is eating. Well, you know, that's what it is for today's show. Um, if you have any questions, um, please send the questions to Tito in care of the animal clinic. That's 1380 South Lapeer Road. Oxford, Michigan, 48371. And Tito will be here to help me, and hopefully his bandana will stay on. And until next time, grab a pet and give him a hug.